Hello, and welcome to Look Smarter Than You Are with OBIEE. This is the first part in a multi-part series on importing ASO databases into the repository. So I'm going to click and open up the BI administration tool. Let me maximize the window so it's nice and big. I'm going to head over to the file menu and open the repository file. I'm going to open the active file online, but you could certainly make the same changes in offline mode. I'm going to enter the repository password as well as an administrator user ID and password. So the repository opens. You'll see my presentation layer on the left, business model and mapping layer in the middle, and my physical layer on the right hand side. I'm going to head over to the file menu and select import metadata. From my connection type, I'm going to select SBase 9 Plus. Don't worry, it'll still work with SBase 11. Why they keep saying SBase 9, I do not know. I'm going to enter the name of my SBase server as well as an administrative user ID and password for SBase. Then I'm going to go ahead and click the Next button. Here's my server. If I click the plus sign in front, I'll see all the applications. Again, these are not in alphabetical order. Instead, the most recently created databases will be at the bottom, and the older databases will be toward the top. For this example, because I'm going to be talking specifically about ASO databases, I'll be using the ASO SAMP database. So I'm going to click that application, open it up, and I'm going to just select the sample database using the arrows in the middle, the single arrow. I'm going to go ahead and import the selected database. Okay, great. It's already over here in my repository view, just that quick and easy. So again, I leave all the checkboxes checked when I come in here because I can easily delete things if, if it's in the repository and I don't want it later, but sometimes it's more challenging to try and re-import. So I'm of the theory that, hey, more is better to start with, and then you just cut what you don't want out of the picture. So I'm going to click Finish to finish the import process. And there is my new import. You'll see my local host, see the little red icon that indicates it's new. There's my connection pool under my local host server. And there is my application, my database, as well as all of my dimensions. Now, probably the biggest difference between ASO and BSO databases is the fact that ASO databases can, be, can have multiple hierarchies because sometimes you want to have calculations in some hierarchies while other hierarchies within the same dimension can be stored. So what OB does when you have multiple hierarchies enabled is it actually creates those multiple hierarchies and it will actually create separate presentation tables for your users. So if I just pick this database up, for example, and this is actually how easy it is, I'm going to drop it as a business model and mapping layer. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and by the way, I already obviously have a sample database right up above there, which is why I gave it the pound sign one. I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop it over to the presentation layer. And remember that over here, these are the subject areas in the presentation layer. This is the layer that your users see and work with when they're building their reports. So notice now, I mean, it didn't seem like, oh, so what? So it's separate hierarchies, no big deal. But now take a look at what it does over here in the presentation layer it truly does create a separate presentation table for each of those hierarchies. Now, that's fine, and we could certainly right-click up here on the database, and we could create a new presentation table, call it time members, something like that. Okay. And then I could reorder things so that it's above those three children. By right-clicking that database and going to its properties, and on the presentation tables tab, 
I click on the time members, the new one I created, and I make sure that it's above the children that I want to nest inside it. So you can see this gets kind of, you know, yes, I can fix the issue this way, but is this really the best way to present this? Okay, so now that those are there, that's great. I'm going to say okay. And now this is the old tried and true way that I know works. So I'm going to go ahead, right click month date, show properties. And this is what's strange, but I simply do the hyphen and a greater than sign. And that tells month to date to nest inside time members. There are other ways to nest the columns as well, but I this is just the way that I learned many years ago. And so I just can't learn any new tricks apparently. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And it sounds weird. It doesn't even look like it's nested. But when we go take a look at the web client, it would be nested inside. So that's certainly one way to address this issue. But I don't know that it's necessarily the best way. So let's talk about what else can we do. And by the way, I'm going to delete that one that I dragged over there so quickly because I do want to make some additional changes. So what I want to do is I actually want to delete it from the presentation layer. I want to delete it from the business model. So I'm going to head over to the business model, delete it. As soon as I delete that, it will automatically remove the subject area as well, because the subject area has to be modeled off of that business model. So when I know I want both to go away, I just go right over to the business model and delete it. So hopefully that didn't confuse you. I just wanted to show you what does that look like to your users when they come in to work with it. So another way that I can approach this multiple hierarchies is I can right click my time member and I can go ahead and choose convert to single hierarchy view. And what happens then is it basically puts that back so I truly have generations now in addition to my hierarchy. So there are my periods and so on my quarters, okay? So it puts it back into more of the S space look and feel that I'm accustomed to, which is good, but remember now that members might be in unexpected places. Like I might have suddenly a quarter in my periods dimension. Why? Because that's the generation that it's in. So just be careful about that. Keep that in mind. And again, you might not know that until you get into the web client and you take a look at the subject area and how it looks for reporting purposes. But the other benefit to this is when I have multiple hierarchies, I cannot bring a member from two different hierarchies into a report for the same dimension. So let's think about it. We had a month to date, quarter to date, year to date table. If I wanted to create a report with months and quarters for some reason, I would not be able to do that using that particular structure because quarter to date was in a completely different hierarchy. OB would throw an error on that. With it being converted to a single hierarchy, I can bring those members in very easily. But should I change my mind and decide I really like multiple hierarchies, I'll right click again and I can convert back to a multi-hierarchical view. And there you go. So it's right back the way it was. Thanks for watching and look for the other parts in this series on importing ASO databases into the repository.